Good morning, boys and girls. It's Karen Lee coming to you from my living room here in South Berwick with another edition of Karen Reads. Uh, the book I have today is called The Prince Who Was Just Himself, written by Silke Schnee. She's a German writer, and her last name, Schnee, in German means snow. So imagine having the last name Snow. That would be fun. Um, she has a son with Down syndrome, which is a learning disability that makes him very special. And this book is about a prince who is special. The illustrator is Heike Sistig. She's also German and has done a lot of children's books. Okay, the prince who was just himself. Once upon a time, there lived a king and queen who had two sons, Big Prince Luke and Little Prince Jonas. Two children are not enough for me, said the queen to the king one day. I wish we had more children. Children are simply wonderful. The king was not so sure. He looked at all the castle windows that had been cracked during princely soccer games. He remembered the prince's hobbles of protest when they didn't want to go to bed at night. He felt tiredness creep over him as he thought of being wakened every night by the princes who wanted to sleep close to him in his big kingly bed. But the queen took the man by the arm and led him down into the palace gardens. There, before their very eyes, Prince Jonas made a perfect penalty kick. The king was mighty proud of him. After the usual bedtime howls, he tucked the princes into bed. Then Prince Luke read aloud to him from his favorite book. The king's heart was softened, and he was mighty proud of his older son. One day, the queen announced that she was expecting a baby, and everyone was terribly excited. After many months of waiting, Prince Noah was born. He looks a little different, said the king. He's not like the others, agreed the queen. He is our brother, said Prince Luke. He is just himself, said Prince Jonas. And right away, they all loved Prince Noah very, very much. He listened quietly and thoughtfully whenever the queen sang to him, and he never interrupted her. He was not very good at running and jumping, but it didn't matter because he was never in a hurry anyhow. He liked being wherever he was and was not worried about where he would go next. He hardly ever used words or sentences, yet people understood him just as well. One day, a great storm arose and the sun was darkened. The terrible knight, Scarface, wanted to attack the kingdom. The royal family and all the people of the land were terrified. But the princes knew they had to protect their kingdom 
So the three of them saddled their horses and rode out onto the battlefield. The great knight Scarface looked wicked and powerful. He sat bolt upright upon his horse and raised his sword above his head. His mighty army was assembled behind him, waiting only for him to give the signal to attack by letting his sword come crashing down. All the warriors held their breath. Only the storm wind blew in gusts that made their armor creak and rattle. You can see the littlest prince off to the side there, Prince Noah. Scarface braced himself against the gust and angrily raised his head still higher so that he would look even bigger and fiercer. The wind made his eyes water and tears ran down his face in little streams. At this, the prince who was just himself cocked his head and looked intently at the night. Suddenly, without saying a word, as was his custom, he spurred on his horse and rode directly toward Scarface, stopping only when he was right in front of him. Then Prince Noah stretched out his little right hand and touched the scar on the knight's face. Looking deeply into his deep, into his tear-filled eyes, he asked in a soft, caring voice, does it hurt? Scarface opened his mouth and then shut it again. Bewildered, he let his sword sink to his side. He shook himself and rubbed his eyes in surprise. He stared at Noah, whose little hand was still touching the scar on his face. Such a thing had never happened to Scarface before. He knew all about hate and fighting, but he never before had encountered love and caring. Strange new feelings filled his heart and he didn't know what to do. He began to tremble all over. First his teeth chattered, then his armor rattled, and then even the legs of his horse began to shake. In order to warn him, the prince who was just himself threw his, in order to warm him, the prince who was just himself threw his arms around the mighty scar face. A hush fell over everyone. Even the storm quieted down and the sun peeked out from behind the cloud, not wanting to miss what was happening. As they watched, a smile slowly spread across the night's face. And then a vo voice broke the silence. Long live Prince Noah. He has saved us. Long may he live. More and more voices joined the chorus, sounding louder and happier every moment. Long live Prince Noah, our great Prince Noah. The king and queen, Prince Luke and Prince Jonas, and all the people of the land were mighty proud of the little prince. The prince who was just himself only smiled at them and was happy to be out in the sun. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it.
Bye-bye.